Hey guys, this is Saturn Dave, and I'm coming to you with a little bit of an update video. You know, a lot of people have liked my Facebook page recently, or started following me on Twitter. I have a Twitter now, um, or Instagram, and um, and you know, as as a result, I'm getting a lot of messages, a lot of questions asking, what other projects do I do? How do I buy your work? Why don't you stream anymore? Um, why aren't you on the Sega Saturn Shiro podcast anymore? Because they haven't heard me on there. Um, and I just figured I'd do a video kind of telling you where I'm at in this new year and um, and kind of getting some of you newer folks up to date on where things are. So to start out, you know, basically back in 2017, Patrick Trainer and Kay Kona and I, we got together and we formed this new podcast called the Sega Santa Shiro Podcast. And it was basically just three guys getting together talking about their love for this pod or for this uh, for this console. We all love the Sega Saturn and all have a lot of things in common uh, when it comes to this console. So, um, also, I was a pretty diehard U.S. long box collector, and at the time, because there were several holes in my collection, you know, several games that we didn't get in the West that I really hoped we had gotten. You know, uh, don't get me wrong, I absolutely love the Japanese library. Um, it's extensive and it's amazing. And the cover arts are, by and large, you know, much better than the U.S. counterparts. However, um, that said, you know, I always hoped that we would get certain games in the West that we never got. And so, kind of as a bit of a hobby, I guess I started designing some cover arts. Um, just, just for my own collection, just for myself. Uh, first, I started with Sonic R. I was missing the manual for my long box copy, my legit copy. I needed a manual. I didn't want to pay you know, 10 to 20 bucks on eBay for a manual, so I just decided, hey, you know, I could probably make this myself. And then when I started sharing that on the groups, I started getting messages and comments from people saying, well, could you make me one? I didn't have the means to do that at the time, but it did get me thinking that I could probably do more of these for myself, for my own collection. And that's what I did. Um, I started doing stuff like this Christmas Nights box. And, you know, as soon as I shared this on the groups, Many, many people said, here, take my money, you know, I, I will pay you to make one for me. And at the time, I wasn't really, didn't have the tooling, didn't have the expertise. This, of course, what you're looking at is is a revised copy. It's not what the original looked like. The, it's come a long way. But uh, be that as it may, what we decided to do at, the, at about the same time, we were coming up on Christmas for the podcast, and we decided we wanted to do something as a gift for the community. So... What we did is we released this as a PDF for free that people could download, take to a print shop, and, and print their own copy. That was the idea, at least. Um, and incidentally, it was encrypted. The file was encrypted with a password, and it was locked down so you couldn't edit it, but you could print it as much as you wanted. So unfortunately, some individual who happens to be an eBay seller took the design and started selling copies on eBay. And I don't personally have too much of a problem with that. It's just that he wasn't doing a very good job. Like he was doing a really shoddy job printing it on inkjet printer. It didn't look very good. Um, he had he couldn't edit it, so it retained the Sega Saturn Shiro logo on the front. So it kind of you know represented us, and at the same time the quality was so poor. I kind of was embarrassed that to have that represent us and have that float around in the community and. You know, perhaps other people would buy buy it later on and think, well, this is this is crap, you know. So I got a little miffed, to be honest, and to make a long story short, I just decided if this is going to happen, then it, at least it should be done right, you know. So I kind of took the time to tool up and make sure that I could do this myself for people in the community. I have a full-time job and it pays well and I don't really need to do this for a living, so this is strictly a hobby. Um, but I do love this community, and I love this console, so I figured I, it would be great if I could do something to give back, you know? So what I did was um, I made this first copy of Knights, and that's my, my actual copy of the disc. And then here is the, here is the reproduction disc that I kind of made there. I'm sorry, it's hot in this room. And I'm in an awkward position, but we're doing the best I can here. So anyway, here it is, Nights into Dreams, or Christmas Nights into Dreams, sorry. And you get the story there. This is what it's supposed to look like. If you buy a, a bootleg on Etsy, 
it's not going to have it won't have these pages right here it won't have the article uh, taken from official Sega Saturn magazine and it won't uh, have the the back page there it won't be numbered there's a signature of authenticity and a production number on every thing that I do and then the back I've cleaned up significantly since that first release so this is available for order on my page on Facebook um, there is a significant line you know so and I do apologize that's one of the things you know I try to do first come first serve I have I have people offer me money all the time I people say well I'm ready to pay you right now and I realize, you know, like if I was just in this for the money, I could just take people's money as, as it comes, you know, but the thing is, there's a lot of people that want this stuff and I want to serve this community in the best way that I can. And I do believe in fairness. I do believe in first come first serve. So I am trying to get to everybody in the list as they signed up. And I realize that does mean that since I'm kind of a one man factory, I can only work so fast. But if you guys are patient and you want games, I ship games, you know, so eventually you will get your copy and it costs you absolutely nothing. It never costs you anything to get on a list. So last March, um, Aisha and uh, her team, they released the patch to Link a Liver Story. And this was a beautiful game, one that, um, that uh, was released early in the Saturn's life in Japan and one that I always wished had come to the West because I love RPGs. Um, and it had kind of like a Zelda vibe, a bit of a Zelda vibe. Um, and, you know, I just felt like this game definitely, definitely needs a, um, a Western release. And I'm not the only one who's done one. Don't get me wrong. I'm not the only one doing this stuff. I'm just one person out of many that are, you know, interested in doing these reproductions or productions. I don't know. Thing is, some people call it a bootleg. Some people call it a reproduction. I call it a production because, I mean, I'm not reproducing anything that existed. This game was never released in the West, and it certainly didn't have a translated long box format. So, you know, we could go in circles arguing semantics, and it doesn't really matter to me. At the end of the day, it's just what I'm interested in doing. And, um, you know, beyond beyond just doing these reproductions, the, the core... The core tenet of my hobby, I guess you could say, is that I'm focused on trying to create something that looks period accurate. You know, what would SOA have done? You know, what would JVC have done? How would these manuals have looked if they were released in the 90s by Sega of America? And I have to consider the exact year that they were developed. I have to consider things like what serial number would they have had? What ESRB rating would they have had? Were they a Sega exclusive? Um, would they have bore this older Sega exclusive logo or would they have bore the new Sega exclusive logo at the top? I'm not just a reproduction dude. I'm a, I'm a nerd when it comes to this stuff. So, you know, that's, that's the thing is I'm doing this for my own collection. Okay, at the end of the day, I'm doing this for my own collection. So it's gotta be good enough for me before I even think about selling it to you guys. Then there was KO Flying Squadron 2. This is a game I have loved um, and enjoyed for so long. And, you know, um, we did get Center Ring Boxing in the United States, and that was a JVC publish. So I figured, okay, they had a publishing house in the United States to save money. They would have published it themselves if they had decided to publish it. So it's got the licensed buy, it's got the kids to adults, JVC, and then on the spine you can see it would be hypothetically a JVC publish. And then on the back, one player, JVC, kids to adults, all of the legalese there, hypothetical legalese obviously. Um, make no mistake guys, I don't have a license to do this, it's not legit but it's as legit as I can make it because that's my dream is to make this stuff look and feel as legit as I possibly can. However, there's always a logo that says Sega Saturn Shiro Customs or Dave Lee Customs on there. I don't want people to think that 
that Sega actually released this game when they when they didn't, you know. Um, I'm not trying to fool anybody, I'm just trying to... And this uses the PAL manual. This uses the black and white PAL manual. A lot of third-party uh, publishers would just publish in black and white in order to save money. And um, as a Saturn collector, I can honestly say that I own so many of these, I've been able to look and research um, publishing habits. Radiant Silver Gun. Now, here's a game that definitely should have come to the United States. I don't understand why it didn't. It's a treasure game. We love treasure games. Even back in the day, I feel like they had a really solid reception. This was right at the, right at the time. 98 was right at the time when they changed their logo to the new logo. I mean, it was iffy, but I'm pretty sure that's what it would have been if it had come to the States. It's got the teen ESRB rating licensed. Um, You've got the back art here. It's capable of backup using the backup RAM cart. One to two players. Cinepack. All that stuff needs to be there. The wide, uh, the uh, NTSC warning. Disc. Uh, actually, the, the disc art has changed for this game several times, um, but that was my first design for the disc art. I think the new disc art is more striking. Here you have, here you have the manual, table of contents, firing modes, character write-ups and bios, cinemas, so that you understand what's actually being said. These cinemas are ripped from the Xbox 360 arcade release. So, um, well, they're a combination of the, they're a combination of the Shinforce translate. There was a, there was an old website that had a, a fan translation, and then they're kind of a combination of the two. And there you have it. And of course, as I said before, everything I do comes with a signature of authenticity and a production number. Obviously, this doesn't because it's my own copy. I don't need to put a production number on my own copy. Oh, I also mentioned that a lot of the games that I ship are actually better than the ones you see here because I always make a design first for myself and then I continue to improve and improve it for the ones that I ship out. So oftentimes I don't go back. I'm too lazy to go back and reprint one for myself because I already did one. So I mean, I promise you that whatever you're seeing here is even better when it gets to you guys. Terry Pratchett's Discworld. Here is a game that um, I loved playing as a kid. Got it on PlayStation. They got it on the Saturn uh, in the PAL territories, but not in the United States. Why not? You know, I mean, these games, these point and click games were big back then. I don't really understand, but I mean, all I can say is chalk it up to sales on the Saturn being so weak. You know, again, this is a, um, I spare no expense on the cover as far as color, but I did stick with the like hand-drawn aspect of the PAL manual and the black and white. Subsequently, I have added color screenshots and stuff. I've cleaned it up quite a bit. So actually the one that ships um, to you guys is actually better than the one that I have here. Oh, forgot to show you the back. There's the back. Terry Pratchett's Discworld. Oh, um, for anyone who's wondering, the games on the left are currently available. They're currently in production. The ones on the right are either about to be in production or they are concept items, future projects to be released. Here is Discworld 2. Okay. I've cleaned up the spine, I've cleaned up the design on this. Also, they dropped the Terry Pratchett's, so that's been dropped on the release. Um, it was Terry Pratchett's Discworld for the first one, and then it was just Discworld 2 Missing Presumed for the second one, so that was an error. But see, that's the thing I have to go back. I have to look at this stuff and uh, take everything into consideration when it comes to doing the release that um, is 
period accurate. You get the Pratchett, SIG, and all of that information there. The uh, Perfect Ten Productions and Signosis, Perfect Entertainment, Teens for Suggestive Themes. You've got the disc art there. Okay. And then the manual. This one's a thicker manual than the first. More going on in this game. I actually played this one and enjoyed this one more than the first one. I, it, it was definitely an improvement, you know? But um, the other thing is, a lot of times when you see repros and stuff like that, you, they're not the same on online in pictures as they are in the hand, you know? And one of my, one of my pet peeves, one of the things that I, is really important to me is that they feel just as good in the hand, maybe even better, you know, that to the naked eye, they look and feel OEM, you know? They've got just the right amount of gloss. I don't print using photo gloss paper. That's inaccurate. It would be an anachronistic to do so, but I don't print with, um, I don't print with uh, flat matte paper either. Deep Fear. Um, this one, okay, wait a second. This was the first Deep Fear that I made. It's been changed since then. Yeah, this was the first Deep Fear that I made with the silver discs. And um, this manual, hold on just a second. Okay, this is actually the current uh, Deep Fear that's actually available for, uh, for purchase. It's got the alien on the front, and this was actually a model. This is actually a scan of a model that was, that was molded and made um, as a reference art for the game. And then you've got the discs. Now see, I know the silver discs look nice, but I think that the black and red looks a little bit more striking. Personally, that's my, that's my opinion. And then for those that really like the, the cover art, they like the PAL cover art, they can flip it like that. Uh, actually, you know what? <laughs> Again, this copy is not as good as the copies that have already shipped um, and that are shipping. This is a uh, this is kind of like an early an early demo copy. So you um, you get a you get a reversible cover that looks like this, and you can flip it so that you can have either or. You can choose which back art you want um, based on your preference. But the back image does have the alien on it and then it has the write-up and the, the screenshots and the um, this was a this was a true motion uh, this was a game that uses true motion for the video and CRI 80x for the uh, audio. And this was before the uh, CRI started doing their own uh, soft deck video codec on the Saturn, I think, I believe. Otherwise, I can't understand why why they would have gone with True Motion for the video and CRI for the audio. Then we have Virtua Fighter, the original. A lot of folks probably wonder why I did this one. Um, you know, the truth is, we in the States, we all got Virtua Fighter as a pack in, so it came in like a it came in a typical, I don't know, like jewel case that was packed into the console. And, you know, for that reason, it's really hard to display um, with all the rest of your games on a shelf. So I decided to make this a, a true long box copy, you know? And so here you have my actual not for resale copy that was packed in with my console. And then you have this copy right here which is the final disc. And then you've got, let's see. Sorry about this video going along, but all right. So you've got, and again, 
all of this stuff has been cleaned up quite a bit. Um, anything, anything I have in my collection personally is, um, is a test. It's basically like a proof of concept. And then I clean it up and I make it even better before I ship it out to you guys because it's got to be perfect. Well, perfection is impossible, but it's got to be close to perfect. It's got to be, you know, it's got to feel, look and feel OEM. Clockwork Night Puzzle was a, uh, was a demo. It was, it was supposed to be released. It was being worked on at the same time as Clockwork Night 1 and 2, kind of in that middle space. And um, it's actually a really fun, kind of, um, kind of like Bomberman meets Choo Choo Rocket kind of thing. And it was meant to be like 12 players, um, but it ended up just being a, a simple demo. And it's got a few levels and an, and an end boss, and then it's got some other options in there. Um, it's a pretty basic demo, but for those of you who are Clockwork Night fans, um, I think it's a it's an absolutely must play from a historical standpoint. Like, you know, to understand where it fit in the in the uh, trilogy, or what would have been a trilogy of games on the Saturn. There's the disc. Ah, damn it. I'm fumbling over myself here. All right, let's try to do this. I need, I really, I really need is like a desk setup. Um, so here you have a table of contents, everything you need to know about the demo, the enemies, how they attack, battle royale mode, um, some screenshots, and then of, of course I got um, all of the historical write-ups in OSSM and um, computer and video games and then um, Mean Machine Sega. So you have you have the magazine write-ups and then you have um, a write-up about Penguin War itself, the prototype, and the disc that was dumped by our good friend uh, Peter O'Hanlon Tongara. Uh, he runs the Clockwork Night uh, dot, it's like clockworknight.net or clockworknight. Dot. To be honest, it's down right now, but I really wish he would bring it back. But he went to his own personal expense to buy the game and dump it for the public, so I sent him a copy just to say thanks. Probably even that wasn't enough, but uh, I just wanted you to know how grateful I was um, because these things should be released to the public. Now, coming soon is my copy of Grandia and it's finished and it's actually been finished since mid-September however the patch is not finished and if there's anything I can tell you for certain is that I have profound respect for the people who work their asses off to patch the Japanese um, into English and bring it over and localize it for us to enjoy so the last thing I'm going to do is release this against Trekkies Unite's will, okay, against his wishes. He wants me, you know, he wants everybody actually to to hold off and wait until the patch is finished. It's not so much that he minds people making reproductions of his pat with his patch, but you know, he just wants them to be respectful enough to wait until he's finished. And unfortunately right now he's kind of caught up with the CRI. This was such a late release for Sega on the Saturn that they were messing around, they were kind of experimenting with the new CRI soft deck that would be released as MPEG soft deck on the Dreamcast. And as a result, the tools that they used for compression and decompression were kind of, they were kind of proprietary. So he's having trouble just getting that video decompressed and then recompressed again. Um, but this game is probably the most work I've ever put into a release. And um, it comes with a full fold out color map that also doubles as a poster on the back and it's on a nice like cotton type paper I I was thinking about putting it on kind of like a gloss a thin gloss paper more like most posters but this I wanted it to feel like a map so I put it on this like nice uh, thick kind of like cotton paper that um, makes it feel more traditional like a map and yours won't have problems like that where it's and stuff like that and then you've got the games the discs there's the disc there's the second disc with Fina on it I 
can pop it out and show you. There it is right there. Good old Fina. She's your buddy. And then um, the manual itself took me all summer. Wow. I can't. Having trouble getting it out. As you guys know, that, that's a problem with the Saturn. Long boxes sometimes, but oh well. Um, I think I even have nostalgia for that. So anyway, here's the artwork on the back. This is made to look in the same style as the localization on the PlayStation, except instead I went with brown marble to differentiate it from the PlayStation version and also from the green marble of the Japanese version. That was just the decision that I made. I wanted it to feel like something unique that we got, not just a carbon copy of the, the US, or sorry, not just a carbon copy of the Japanese manual. But believe it or not, <laughs> This thing is 40 pages long and it covers everything you want to know about the game. It covers all the characters, little write-ups about each character. Believe me, I love, I love, love, love 90s manuals, especially RPG manuals, you know? And when I was a kid, I used to just read them like they were books, you know? If I wasn't playing the video game, if, if my mom said, you know, turn off the machine when you're going to bed, I'd take the manual to bed and I'd read it with a flashlight under the covers. And so, you know, it's very important to me that that this feels like a real game, you know, that it feels like a real manual that you would want to put on your shelf and actually take out and read from time to time, you know? Because it's not just about buying a repro, you know, and displaying it on your shelf. Like, the whole experience is the feelies, it's the uh, taking it out, taking it off the shelf, opening it up, and looking at it. You know? That's a part of the experience. Actually, that goes, that goes over there. Okay, so then we got, uh, we got a few more to go. I'm sorry this video is going so long. Um, but we've got Tri-Rush Deppy, an excellent platformer. I, it's just a cover, guys, and it's just a disc. But as you can see, it's, you know, it's got, this has an image on it. It's playable. It's US patched. It's just a matter of getting that manual translated. It's such a funny thing. The game itself is completely in English, completely playable. Not just playable in English, but it literally is, the game is in English. However, the manual itself is completely Japanese, and you know, as a result, I need to localize it. I need to completely translate it so that I can bring it to you guys in its complete, um, in its complete form, looking just like it would have if it had sat on a shelf in the mid '90s. Metal Slug. This design has been almost exactly ripped off for a PAL copy that I'm aware of, but you know, they that you know they say that uh, that's a form of flattery, so I'll take it. Um, but anyway, I have not released this yet, but it is playable, and it will see some improvements. It will definitely see some improvements and adjustments. But this was my Metal Slug design. And there's the disc. And then, also, I've, I've moved away from putting Sega Saturn Shiro Customs on anything. Um, Sega Saturn Shiro uh, is not only a podcast, but it's also branching out into, um, you know, a, a media group. And, you know, they kind of need to get away from the whole reproduction thing. And I, I totally agree that that's prudent. So, um, all of my new stuff bears the Dave Lee Customs logo this again is just a is just a cover but um, I did have a, a, a fine gentleman send me a copy of his uh, of his Neo Geo CD manual so that I could uh, it was in English you know so that I could use that in order to make the manual for this Ninja Penguin Manmaru um, this is a patch that's not complete it's been floating around the community for years, 
Um, it's playable. It's kind of slow, like the, the screens have a, a really hard time loading and the patch is maybe a little buggy, it needs some more work, but um, you know, at the end of the day, it's kind of a fun platformer. It's a little bit difficult, to be completely honest, but um, it, was a, it was published by Enix in Japan. And, you know, because Enix also publishes in the U.S., I just, you know, went ahead and dis made that decision that, you know, Enix probably would have published it themselves rather than farming it out to another production house. I mean, you know, anytime, anytime a production company has their own offices in the U.S., it makes more sense financially for them to just publish themselves um, rather than, you know, paying someone else to do it or, or rather than losing out on that, that money. The truth is, it never was published, so it's anyone's guess what it would have actually been, but we can guess, you know, that's the thing, we can, we can speculate, and that's what I like, is the speculation. Parodius, this was a PAL game, completely in English, English manual, I haven't been able to source a copy of the English manual, but as soon as I can, if any of you guys own a PAL copy of this with the manual intact, if you want to help me out, I will send you a free copy of this. Um, but basically, yeah, this was a U.S. long box copy of Parodius, and it had uh, had a couple games playable: the original one, and then kind of like a remake. Yeah, so um, this game is a lot of fun actually, and it's kind of underrated for the Saturn because the Saturn has so many great vertical and horizontal shooters that it kind of gets. Um, you know, it kind of doesn't get as much love because it's seen as kind of basic compared to all the more, you know, flamboyant shooters. Okay, so that's everything that, um, that's everything that's in a case right now. And just if you guys were wondering, all of these cases I purchased on Amazon, they are the replacement cases um, by VGC Online. It's a shop on Amazon. You can buy them for like I think it's 60 bucks for 10, which comes down to like $6 for a case. And I mean, that's in line with what you would pay on eBay for a used case, except these are in pristine condition. Real quick, I'm just gonna run through some other projects that are on the back burner. Um, Police Knots, this was a, this was kind of like my stab at like the mock design that was originally, um, that was originally released as a, as a tiny little thumbnail, uh, and you can find it on the Wikipedia for this. Um, why have I not put this out is, first of all, because I don't have a translated manual. Second of all, because so many other people have done Police Knots uh, repros, I just don't feel like it really, mm. there's a, it's a niche thing, you know, I mean, there are so many other copies out there, to be honest, that I kind of got, uh, dep I kind of got, uh, maybe a little bit discouraged, but I might come back to it. I know Pat really wants me to come back to it. Princess Crown is coming. Cyber Warrior X is working on it. And when he finishes it, it's gonna be amazing. And I will definitely have a copy of that to get out there into the community. Um, Lunar is also being worked on. Silver Star Story. This was my original design right here to um, in keeping with uh, you know working designs and then of course the silver version which costs me a lot more and is a pain in the ass but I do it because you know the love and the craft I'm doing this as a hobby guys um, so I have to challenge myself and then there's the back lunar So there, backup, functionality, working designs, you know, all that good stuff. Elevator Action Returns, there's another one that I definitely, definitely want to, oh, sorry, I forgot the, I forgot to show you guys the disc for Lunar. So it's all made up, you know, it's all ready to go, really I'm just waiting on I'm waiting on the, uh, the translation, you know, to be done, as we all are. And then um, this is, hold on, let me focus. This is Elevator Action Returns by Taito. Amazing game, absolutely amazing. 
and the back art to go with it. That's it guys, I mean for now. Um, there's probably other stuff to be honest. Um, I have folders and folders and filing cabinets full of random bloopers and other designs. Oh, there's a Dragon Force too. I don't know where it is right now, but it exists. I'm working on it. Um, that that patch is actually finished. It's just that there, there doesn't exist an English manual. There are a lot of cover and back insert copies of Dragon Force 2 out there, repro-wise, but nobody's gone to the trouble to create an entirely English patched manual. I will do it. I mean, I'm sure somebody will do it. It may not it may be more than just me, but I definitely want to do it. It's just, it's a lot of work to do this, guys. So, um, when I'm not doing this stuff, when I'm not doing um, these productions, I'm also uh, a co-host on the Sega Saturn Shiro podcast, and I've actually come back to that. Um, I have more time in my schedule now, and I've actually been able to sustain it where I can come back and be a part of the podcast. Um, but yeah, they're in their fourth season right now. And we're kind of going to start taking votes for uh, what games people want us to play. And we're also doing a lot of interviews and gearing up for some cool stuff on the horizon. But um, aside from that, I try to do some streaming from time to time on my YouTube channel. You can check that out if you're interested while you're watching right here on the YouTube channel. But um, I'm trying to fix my streaming setup. So as soon as that is fixed, I will be doing some more streaming. But uh, until then... Um, just so you guys understand how this works, I operate mostly out of my Facebook page, uh, Sega Saturn Dave. Well, I go by Saturn Dave, but the URL is facebook.com slash Sega Saturn Dave. And on my services page, you can see all the games that are available to sign up for the Google order form. Once you guys are on that order form, once you guys do it, don't worry, you're on there. Your spot, I'll never, I'll never delete you. You're, you'll always be on there. You may be behind several people, but as I work my way through, and I produce these games in a rotation, so I'm always doing like batches of 10 or batches of 20, depending on the demand for the game. And um, when I work my way through, I will get to you. I'll reach out to you through PM or email, and I will let you know that yours is ready to ship. At that time, you can decline and say, I, you know, I changed my mind, I want to pass it on, or you can accept and you can, you can buy it. Be that even as it may, um, I'm not going to put a gun to your head and say, you need to buy it like right now, you need to pay me right now. I'm really good about, really flexible about, you know, payment and people catching people right in the middle of a work week. I can wait, you know, I can wait a week or two until you have the money, but because um, this is not about the money for me. Yes, I do need to be able to make money doing this so that I can offset my production costs and continue to do it. But this is, for me, this is about getting... Period accurate, well, hypothetically, historically accurate um, copies of these games that we never got in the West out into the community so that you guys can enjoy them, put them on your shelf, and then share them with people and actually read the manuals and enjoy the entire experience instead of just buying a cheap cover and back insert on Etsy, okay? So that's that's the goal. That's the, that is the, uh, I guess you could say, what I'm aiming for. And there's a bunch of other people that are doing this, that are amazing. Um, ben Boyd, he's one of the best. He does a bunch of PAL stuff. Um, he's, he's just about the best there is. I have his police knots and it's amazing, it's phenomenal. Jonathan Liet, he's a French guy over on the creatives group. He does some amazing work. Um, Doogie from Lanson, Gunslinging Ninja. He, he does a lot of this work as well, you know, and uh, he has a different sensibility about how he goes goes about stuff, you know, his his design sensibilities and stuff like that. But that doesn't mean that, you know, I wouldn't shout him and say, you know, he definitely is busy doing this stuff and, um, you know, his quality is getting better all the time. You know, he's one of those dudes that is actually working very hard to try to improve his quality all the time. The only thing I would say um, as a caution is, you know, don't, don't take people's money until you're ready to ship, you know. Um, because this is not like a Kickstarter kind of situation. I'm not going to sit on your money. I'll take your name, and when your copy is ready, then I'll take your money, and I'll ship you a game. And if you don't like it, um, I'm really good about customer service as well, because I believe that the customer is right. So anyway, that's pretty much everything you need to know about what I've been doing. Please go check out uh, Sega Saturn Shiro podcast. That's segasaturnshiro.podient.co. That's podient.co. 
or you can check them out on Facebook. That's facebook.com slash play Sega Saturn. Um, and yeah, uh, you can also follow my page, facebook.com slash Sega Saturn Dave. Until next time, this is Saturn Dave reminding you to play your Sega Saturn. See you guys. <laughs>